people that watch what is the solution i don't hear any solution is the height i don't even really see the uh, uh yeah Clinton. again the problem is not Obama as much as it is the Federal Reserve and the system that has been there for policy she espouses and every single policy of President Obama has been demonstrably bad for women 92 percent 92 percent of the jobs lost during Barack Obama's first term belonged to women Senator Cruz is precisely right Right. Three million women have fallen. Now she lost her job. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good point. There you go. Not I mean, to mention women. Obama's <laughs> running around promising <laughs> ladies houses and all this other stuff that he never delivers on. That's right. on. I am a conservative <laughs> because I know our values, our principles, and our policies work better about to lift too. everyone up, men and women. Thank you, Mrs. Fiorina. Carl? Dr. Carson, we know you as a physician, but we wanted to ask you about your involvement on some corporate boards. I think actually Fiorina is now not considered to be unemployed because she's so long term unemployed that she's come off of the unemployment. America, because of its domestic partner benefits. Why would you serve on a company whose policies seem to run counter to your views on homosexuality? Well, obviously, you don't understand my views on homosexuality. Uh, I believe that our Constitution protects everybody, regardless of their sexual orientation or any other aspect. I also believe that marriage is between one man and one woman. And that there is no reason that you can't uh, be perfectly fair to the gay community. They shouldn't automatically assume that because you believe that marriage is between one man and one woman, that you are a homophobe. And this is one of the myths that the left perpetrates on our society. And this is how they frighten people and get people to shut up. You know, that's what the PC culture is all about, and it's destroying this nation. The fact of the matter is, we, the American people, are not each other's enemies. It's those people who are trying to divide us who are the enemies, and we need to make that very clear to everybody. Very good answer. Yep. One more question. This is a company called Manatech, a maker of nutritional supplements with which you had a 10-year relationship. They offered claims that they could cure autism, cancer, they paid $7 million to settle a deceptive marketing lawsuit in Texas, and yet your involvement continued. Why? Well, that's easy to answer. I didn't have an involvement with them. That is total propaganda, and this is what happens in our society, total propaganda. I did a couple of speeches for them. I did speeches for other people. They were paid speeches. It is absolutely absurd to say that I had any kind of a relationship with them. Do I take the product? Yes. I, I think hey, John McCain product. goes and visits uh, ISIS fair, and gives them money page. and thinks they're great <laughs> guys. If somebody put me on But again, page, Rob, you know, this is going to be about the economy, and these are these are personal attacks coming after Rubio for his uh, bankruptcies or whatever, and coming after Carson for making speeches. This debate is just poor. <laughs> yeah. well, it's not a debate. I mean, oh, I mean, it was I just called a debate. I was right. Yeah, exactly. It's not a debate. But this is being just handled poorly by these three. Well, it's, it's, it's CNBC versus the GOP. That's, well, what, I mean, that's but, what this but, is. Yeah. That's stand, what this is. Stand here and I'll throw a rotten tomato at you. It, it, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing being done here. Yeah, there's well, no sustenance. It's the biggest still. waste of time ever. Well, see, yeah. the next time they're going to put them in a, the, one of those booths, you know, where when you hit the target, they fall into the dunk the, tank. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah that's, that's pretty much what it is. Yeah, that's let's go to break. We'll be right back. They're going to take a quick break, sir. We will be right back. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. That's ancientdefense.com. Break down why you're so proud of these filters. Well, I mean, this, this, the Alexa Pure is really a culmination of 
all of my experience, it was posed to me as an extremely challenging uh, project. Uh, they wanted a product that would actually operate without any electricity, so it had no pressure. You had to do it all by gravity. And they needed, they really effectively said, we need everything imaginable to be removed efficiently, way higher than 99%. And so the result was, it, it was it, it's an like extreme challenge. I uh, worked on it uh, for quite a long time. And basically what we've done is we've created a, the only filter, to my knowledge, that hits all three. It will remove effectively all the major uh, metals, uh, all the major non-metals such as fluoride. It will take out uh, all known microbiological threats, including viral, bacterial, and cysts. And it will take out uh, organic chemicals of pretty much everything, with, with, without exception. It's a very, very powerful device. I don't believe that there's anything else out there in the world that can do that, especially under gravity flow conditions. The fit and finish are fantastic. No, no compromise was made on the quality of the uh, c construction. Um, so, I mean, it's really a, a remarkable achievement on their part. And uh, I feel very proud, actually, to be part of the team that put that together. Uh, what's your view overall on fluoride? Well, okay, so we actually tested against both the fluoride ion and the fluorosilicate that you mentioned, which is the additive that people put into water uh, under federal control. And basically, uh, we removed both of them with equal efficiency. So we wanted to be sure that no matter how fluoride is added to the water, it can be intercepted and removed. Um, so that's how we've dealt with that. All I can tell you is that we tested against all known fluoride chemicals that are added to water the new ones and the old ones, and uh, we remove them all of equal efficiency. And it's your belief that this is the best gravity-fed filter of the design out there available to the public? Uh, without a doubt. I mean, most of these uh, gravity flow filters are at best uh, simple particulate filters. They remove dirt and, and uh, debris, sediment. Uh, they're not going to be capable of intercepting a viral particle. Uh, to the degree, we're talking quantitative reduction below detection. You no know, one can touch that kind of capability. Well, I'm impressed, and I want to thank you so much for your time today. It is the Alexa Pure Pro family of water filtration systems available, uh, discounted exclusively at InfoWarsStore.com. I want to thank uh, Mr. Redhawk for allowing us to be part of the launch of this. Um, it's on sale right now for their main unit, $177. Leading competitors that aren't even as good or more than that. And they've also got uh, the, the survival spring uh, type a straw system for survival uh, that uh, is an absolute must have. with the special skills that Silicon Valley wants. Welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News live coverage of the third GOP debate. We've just come back from break, and so has CNBC. Let's pick it up with what they're talking about. Highly qualified Americans. I mean, honestly, hold on. We don't even have to even well, look at or listen to even think that it's even happening out here tonight. Everyone should get on Twitter right now, Facebook, and tweet these guys, everybody who's a part of this debate, and tell them to walk off the stage. This is a complete and total joke. There's nothing being asked. They're trying to get these guys to fight and bicker between one, uh, one another. Mm -hmm. Completely and totally ridiculous. How are they even going to come up with a poll at the end of this? Because no one's even been given the opportunity to say anything important about anything. This is the first time I've literally been pissed off watching one of these things at a point where I want to throw stuff. This is stupid. Well, you know, Joe, the problem is, is that, you know, as, as Anderson Cooper pointed out with the CN, CNN debate for the uh, Democrats, he said, they were serious candidates, and they were going to give them serious issues. But see, they didn't take this seriously. That's why they're trying to mix it up. Yeah, that's how they open it up. Yeah. Everything in the very beginning was like, oh, you know, CNBC is going to take this seriously. We're going to ask questions about the economy. We're going to... I haven't seen any of what that. What was the first question after the introduction? Oh, are you a comic book villain? No, the first question was, what is your weakness? And then it was, yeah, yeah are, you are you a comic, comic book, book villain? Yeah, completely ridiculous. We have uh, Kit Daniels over there at the Twitter station, and... Kid, do people on Twitter feel the same way that we do? Yeah, absolutely, uh, Jakari. Uh, <clears throat> got a tweet here that's from uh, Steve Fading, uh, Fatting. Excuse me. It says, uh, this debate is a liberal media joke. All the candidates should all walk out. And I tend to agree with that because we, as we constantly see, you know, you see the uh, GOP is turning more and more like into the uh, Democrats. And no longer, we don't really have a two-party system in Washington anymore. It's just basically a one-party system. It's the, uh, the Washington Party. 
you know, the Washington party against you, the individual. And so, you know, the Republicans are constantly all talking like we see in this debate about all these so-called, you know, these issues that they want to push about Social Security and whatnot. But here's yeah, hold, the problem hold that is, thought, David, hold that yeah. let's see, let's let's hear what see, Trump has to say. I, I don't okay. see subtitles, guys. Put the subtitles the up. person in either campaign that's self-funding. I'm putting up 100% of my own money. And right now, I will be putting up a tremendous, so far I put up less than anybody, and I have the best results. Wouldn't that be nice if the country could do that? But I will be putting, I will be putting up, you know, tremendous amounts of money. Super PACs are a disaster. They're a scam. They cause dishonesty. And you better get rid of them, because they are causing a lot of bad decisions to be made by some very good people. And I'm not blaming these folks, but I guess I could. <laughs> very good people are making very bad decisions right now. And if anything comes out of this whole thing with some of these nasty and ridiculous questions, mm -hmm. I will tell you, you better get rid of the super PACs because they're causing a big problem with this country. Not only in dishonesty and what's going on, but also in a lot of bad decisions that are being made for the benefit of lobbyists and special interests. Becky. Let, me, let me add to what he just said. He's, he's exactly right. That's what the problem is with Jeb Bush's campaign. You know, Jeb is having to lay off staff, and yet he has some of the largest available funds for anybody. If you look at his super PACs, he's been one of the largest in terms of getting tens of millions of dollars uh, of super PACs. He has no control over his staff. Gentleman in Florida who happens to be a very nice guy, but not. My apologies. I'm sorry. Really, they can't even really get their, their insults. Can I respond? I yes, right. Yes, okay. To try to get these guys to pick a fight between themselves. Yeah. Well, it's complete and total BS. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because every, I mean, I don't even like half these guys, but what these guys keep pointing out, they just keep attacking them, trying to get them to bicker back and forth. Rubio's calling out the mainstream media exactly right. Ted Cruz called them out exactly right. Everybody knows what the plot of this is. ...telling the families of those victims and the American people that it was because of a video. And yet the mainstream media is going around saying it was the greatest week in Hillary Clinton's campaign. It was the week she got exposed as a liar. I hope Rand Paul has his Hillary for Prison t-shirt on it up in there and he's... Uh. <laughs> just waiting quietly in the corner to bust that out at, you know, some prime time that he's picked. Thank you very much. I'd like to introduce my colleague. Brand, I'm, I'm waiting on you. Come on, man, pull through. All right, uh, I'm sorry, Kit, we cut you off. Uh, what, what other thoughts did you have over there at the Twitter station? You've been a fierce critic of the fact. Well, like I said earlier, the uh, Republicans are always constantly, you know, they're pushing these uh, so-called issues that they want to push, you know, about Social Security and so-called gutting uh, government spending. But like David said before, the real issue is the Federal Reserve. Because, I mean, they can talk and talk, but it's all meaningless as long as there's a Federal Reserve that's basically kind of like a farmer that's feeding the fat goose of the government. So as long as there is, you know, this Federal Reserve system in place. Hey, they're talking about that right now, Kit. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> let's pick up, let's <laughs> no, pick up with this. Let's hear what this. they have to say. And this star chamber. That, that, that has been engaging in this incredible experiment of quantitative easing, QE1, QE2, QE3, QE infinity. And the people who are being impacted, you know, a question that was asked earlier, Becky asked, was about working women. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting, you look at on Wall Street, the Fed is doing great. It's driving up stock prices, Wall Street's doing great. You know, today, the top 1% earn a higher share of our income than any year since 1928. But if you look at working men and women, if you look at a single mom buying groceries, she sees hamburger prices have gone up near nearly 40%. She sees her cost of electricity going up. She sees her health insurance going up. And loose money is one of the major problems. We need sound money. And I think the Fed should get out of the business of trying to juice our economy and simply be focused on sound money and monetary stability, ideally tied to gold. I'd Senator like Paul, that. the same question to you. Oh, well, thank you very much. Whoa. I'd like to thank Ted for co-sponsoring my bill, Audit the Fed. And I think it's precisely because of the arrogance of someone like Ben Bernanke, who now calls us all know-nothings, that's precisely why we need Audit the Fed. I think it is really a, a very <coughs> much a, a huge problem that an organization as powerful as the Fed comes and lobbies against them being audited on the Hill. I would prevent them from lobbying Congress. I don't think the Fed should be involved with lobbying us. I think we should examine how the Fed has really been part of the problem. You want to study income inequality? Let's bring the Fed board and talk about Fed policy and how it causes income inequality. Let's also bring the Fed forward and have them explain how they caused the housing boom and the crisis 
and what they've done to make us better or worse. I think the Fed has been a great problem.